Hello and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Uh, in this video we're going to be creating this simple tune shader with a rim light and some line art uh, that you can see in this image. Let's get straight into it. This is our Blender scene, just a regular model, doesn't matter which, uh, well, whatever model you want the material to be on. But before we actually get into creating the material, let's, let's go through some settings that will make this come out as best as it can. This is in EV, uh, not in cycles because of how the lighting works and that and stuff I don't really know about. <laughs> okay, for starters, if you want your rim light to have some glow to it, turn on bloom. If you, no sorry, you really should turn on under shadows, cube maps, and, or cascade size and cube size should be as high as they can go. You also want soft shadows off, uh, so we get nice, clean, sharp shadows. And under the layers, oh, render layers, sorry. And under passes, data, we want to turn on Z. This is for the grease pencil, so no lines collide. As you can see, though, these shadows are quite, quite low, low quality. Uh, not, not very pretty. So to change that, this is just a normal sun. We'll go under the shadow settings uh, in uh, object data, shadow settings, and cascade shadow map. Usually this is set to 200. We'll change it to something like 15, so we get a lot nicer shadows. That though depends on the size of your scene. So if you have a massive scene, 200 might be enough. If you have a small scene, you might have to go small. Now that that's done, let's get into the shader tab and actually create this material. Click to create a new material. Let's name it appropriately the Spider-Man material. And first off, delete the principal BSDF. Now, I'm using Goo Engine, so usually I would use the Shadow Info node, a mix node changed from float to color and mix the diffuse shading cast shadows change it from mix to multiply set the factor to one and put this through a color ramp so that we get our cartoony shadows um, unfortunately this isn't in normal blender so uh, I doubt you'll be able to really notice the differences. I don't really notice the differences between regular Blender uh, tune shading method and this method, but I have it anyway, so I might as well use it. So let's get to the normal Blender method, which is uh, using a diffuse <laughs> diffuse BSDF, um, which is the same as our basic principal BSDF um, and we'll plug that into a shader to RGB node um, which turns our shader information into RGB information and plug this into a color ramp so we can simplify the shadows and get that toony look uh, as you can see here I like point one uh, usually Okay, so with this, we actually want it to play as our mask. So we want our shadows to be white and our, our light to be black, which we can do just by swapping the nodes or you can change the color here. Now that, that our actual shade is done, which is basically it, let's mix it all together with colors and our shadow colors and stuff. Change from mix to, uh, from, float to color with our mix node change it from mix to multiply and we actually want this to be in the factor there we go we have it this is our sh shadow color um, you can change how dark it is I prefer, prefer 0.3 and you can change color usually don't touch that I also just prefer to get an RGB node and plug that in to the second slot, change it to the color I want or darkness I want. 
just went through. Uh, this is where you add your textures or procedural stuff if you have it. Doesn't really matter. For this particular project, I'll add an image texture. Right there. Then we put our material in. As you can see, got my Spider Man, our Spider Man suit on. I'll turn on the lenses and web wings to look pretty. Now, something I've noticed is when you zoom out or in at a far distance with the camera, you can see quite dark lines on the UV lines, which is not something we want. So, to fix that, change it from linear to closest. I, I don't know why that fixes it, but it does, and it works great. Uh, as you can see, no black lines when we zoom out. Okay, now that's our shader. I personally like to put it all into groups, tab back out of it, and rename them. You can pull this panel up by pressing N. Uh, I also like to put this into a group, and I'll call it Shadow Color. Copy, paste, paste. There we go. This is actually this is our shader pretty simple stuff let's add our grim light which we can do by putting this through an emission shader and shifting changing the strength to 2 this is the actual our grim light control shift right click to mix these two nodes and as you can see it's plain white let's fix that so to fix it, first of all just add an empty, I've already got an empty in the right spot um, and it, and it, yeah, you'll, you'll see what it does in a second. So let's get a texture coordinate node and you should name your empty rim light empty or something to do with the rim light so your scenes are organized. Let's also add a geometry node. Mix these two together with a vector math node. Change it from add to dot product. Let's grab the object from texture coordinates and the normal from geometry. Control shift, right click. As you can see, we've got our, our highlights. Now, if you want to place the empty where the light actually comes from, put an invert node here so it basically acts as a little spot uh, light I'm fine with it being inverted because it's already set up uh, to be in the right spot now as you can see it might look a little goofy if we have a gradient there if that's if that's what you want stop here I personally prefer to have a sharp uh, highlight so let's add a color ramp just like we did with the shader let's change it from linear to constant and put this one to point one uh, you don't actually have to swap the colors or instead of an invert node you could swap the colors I guess okay now that that's done we'll put it into a group and call it rim lighting copy paste paste and there we go, this is, our action. this is the shader. Pretty simple, pretty clean, pretty efficient. I haven't noticed any performance problems with it when trying to animate. Okay, now let's add our line art, which is actually very easy to do. Uh, unfortunately, it only works from the camera, but you could search up how to do an outline on YouTube and you'll get a tutorial of Blender. Search Blender YouTube. Um, you'll get a tutorial on how to do an inverted hull method that uses the solidify modifier but I personally think usually this looks better so shift a grease pencil blank let's go to the modifier tab and add a line art modifier go to your selected uh, like the collection that has your model and when you create a a grease pencil object it creates a layer and material for you as you can see it's already starting to get together obviously this is much way too thick so we'll set it to one is 
personally. Ah, uh, we'll do two actually. Uh, yeah, there we go. The only you can change the edge type settings to get it to perfectly how you want. Just for this, I'll put it on. I'll change the geometry processing to crease on smooth. So where you can see I've creased it to define his pecs and abs. There's actually now lines there. I also like to add a nice thick outline to our, our line art so that it's just a little more unique. You can press the drop down here or you can just hit shift D. Uh, and we'll also rename it so it's organized to outline. Uh, pretty easy to do the outline. Basically just turn off everything in these two settings except for contour. Change it from uh, contour to silhouette and don't actually see the results yet there we go change the thickness up uh, to whatever size you want uh, I think I might knock them both back at down a size you know no that's fine we'll keep it at that and if it's too big for you even at the smaller sizes go down to the object data Scroll down to strokes and thickness scale. Here we go. Let's slash two. And now it's half the size and uh, still the same, basically. That's it. That's the tutorial. Uh, if you need help, type it in the comments. If you need help with something else, you can type it in the comments. I might not be able to help you though, because I'm not very smart but if you want actual help go to the blender subreddit it has a lot of a lot of people there who are willing to help uh and that's where i've learned most of the blender stuff i know just just one thing i just remembered if you want to be able to turn off the rim light on and off uh and you, you can't just put zero because then it does a black line uh, go into the rim light group, move these back a bit, add another mix node, change it from float to color, change B to black, put it in there, then you can set it to either on or off with a factor. Uh, we'll keep it on for this right now. And that's it, basically. Uh, you can use this on, I think, any model. I don't imagine there's any thing that's particularly restrictive uh, maybe the rim light with a hard surface model that might not look right but yeah pretty pretty easy pretty quick so yeah that's basically it and i hope you all have a great day slash night